Hi, I'm William Barkas, and I'm going to be taking you through the paper Detecting Intrusions in Cyber-Physical Systems of Smart Cities, Challenges and Directions. The paper was written by two authors, Ismail Boutin and Patrick Osterberg, um, from the Department of Information Systems and Technology at Mid-Sweden University in Sweden. And the paper was actually published as a book chapter in a book called Secure Cyber-Physical Systems for Smart Cities, published in 2019. Quickly about the book, um, it's sort of a, a broad reference on information security and privacy in smart cities settings, and uh, you know covers a, a pretty broad range of topics. It looks like from the the table of contents, this is the only ar article actually read. Here's a quick background on the first author of the paper, Ismail Boutoun. Um, I'll I'll let you read that uh, to keep, save time. And Patrick Osterberg, who was the second author, and I think this work was done out of his lab, and he's the head of the Department of Information Systems and Technology uh, at the Mid-Sweden University. So the paper, uh, here's the abstract. Um, it's essentially about <clears throat> the interface of smart cities with cyber physical systems and how the cyber infrastructure kind of underlying smart cities introduces a number of security vulnerabilities um, that, that leads to a number of severe problems, such as system failures, privacy violations, issues of data integrity, um, all, all of, of course, if security and privacy are not addressed properly. Um, in their point of view, they're actually making a case that to do cyber-physical system security correctly in smart cities, we need, they need to use uh, advanced um, anomaly detection approaches. And so they spend quite a bit of time covering these various anomaly detection or intrusion detection systems, IDS, that they talk about, which we'll get into shortly. So an introduction, what are smart cities? What are cyber-physical cyber systems? Uh, the authors kind of back into the, the, the topic area without defining it too tightly, but you know they look at cyber cities, cyber infrastructures, cyber facilities, broad categories like Internet of Things, Industrial Internet of Things, IIoT, Web of Things, um, Internet of Everything. And uh, these are a few areas which are namely related to the current work, uh, current topic of smart cities. And cyber versions of these things are, quote, the counterparts of the terms they emphasize, such as cities, infrastructures, facilities, and relate to the smarter, automated, and technologically improved versions of them. Uh, and then they go on to say that, you know, cyber physical systems are one of the main pillars of all cyber related notions, such as cyber cities, cyber infrastructures, and cyber facilities. But what are smart cities and why do we care? So broadly speaking, there, you know, there's some big changes in the world and that's not just the view from Silicon Valley of the, of the sort of tech innovation giants. The world population living in cities is predicted to double by the United Nations by 2050. Um, this is 2.5 billion more human beings roughly and you know, they all have needs for services and access to opportunity. At the same time, the world's climate is changing. So how do we want to live in that world? Um, and smart cities are part of the answer, at least. So how do you define smart cities? This is a quote from San Francisco's mayor, former mayor Ed Lee, uh, that smart cities are a locally defined idea with common features, including resident-centric services, focus on problems based on community needs and priorities, data-driven processes, and sensors and connectivity. Um, which I think does a good job of summarizing how most people look at smart cities now. It's not exactly, it initially started as a sort of vendor marketing term, um, but has become really a, a sort of an algebraic placeholder for the strategy and vision that any, each given city has. So it's a, a really a locally defined idea. For instance, in San Francisco, this is just one of many kind of smart cities uh, solutions being being tried out. Uh, they're They're interested in earthquake preparedness, clearly. So one thing they're trying is a pilot where the doors of the, of the fire stations open automatically upon detection of a seismic event um, of relevant size. And because the doors are electric and if the power is out, they won't be able to get the fire trucks out. Um, another vision of Smart City is uh, NVIDIA's, which is around you know, the AI city and looking at uh, data from cameras. But broadly speaking, Smart City's domains kind of cover a number of areas. So government services, um, mobility and logistics, how you get people and goods around, uh, utility systems, energy, water, food, waste, the built environment, um, including you know, the buildings we live and work in, uh, 
environmental sensors or sensing, including air pollution, water sensors, more, and public safety and emergency preparedness. Some example use cases of smart cities are you know, intelligent street lighting, waste management, energy management, environmental monitoring, parking, traffic control, advertising monitoring, asset management, predictive maintenance. And so, so that's a giving, I think, a good sense of what the broad vision of the smart city is and why we care and how, how many different cyber physical systems clearly underlie that vision. So here's the authors of the book, of uh, this uh, paper, sorry, just describing what cyber physical systems means. And uh, they say cyber physical systems in general are interrelated to the Internet of Things, and in specific cases, the industrial Internet of Things, in which CPS utilizes IoT and IIoT to command and control several tasks related to the automation of real world duties, such as in the process of control of sewer drainage, drainage systems, water treatment facilities, etc. So, therefore, in our text, CPS has been thought of as an upper umbrella to represent both IoT and IIoT. Whereas Internet of Everything, which was mentioned earlier, um, kind of in includes people and some other things, is, is sort of out of the scope of, of the, their definition. So clearly, cyber physical systems in this context provide extra security risks. They, they consist of you know, a number of subnetworks and therefore possess all the security, security vulnerabilities that these subnetworks might have. So in securing a cyber physical system, all the subsystems need to be considered. That means advanced monitoring procedures need to be devised to detect and identify you know, malfunctioning of network components or corruption and measurements caused by intruders. And especially as you look at robust and resilient power systems and smart grid systems, um, more advanced security needs to be developed. We cited the paper here from 2011. Finally, in their opinion, um, security functions, especially intrusion detection systems, IDS, are one of the most powerful tools to provide that. So figure one, here's the life cycle of information security, which consists of three parts. Um, first, prevention, second, detection, and third, mitigation. As you can see uh, in this figure two, kind of a representing the schematic of uh, the industrial Internet of Things or, or Industry 4.0 in the context of a smart factory, um, that smart cities will constitute a number of critical infrastructures, nuclear power plants, water treatment facilities, and therefore are significant targets for cyber attackers. And um, cyber physical systems are kind of one of the, the broader point of, points of failure uh, or points of vulnerability for cyber attackers. And finally, there, you know, given the, the importance of that, <clears throat> When an intrusion happens for a cyber physical system in a smart city context, it needs to be detected quickly to prevent further serious damage or loss. And uh, just to, you know, state it in the author's words, the importance of cybersecurity in this context, you know, the cyber physical systems of smart cities may include critical infrastructures such as water treatment facilities, electric power turbines, public transportation systems, smart buildings, etc. Cybersecurity of such infrastructures has prime importance since failure of these systems may threaten property or, more importantly, human lives. And the authors give the example of the Stuxnet virus, which I'm sure is pretty familiar to, to many of you listening. Uh, this was the 2011 attack on Iranian nuclear enrichment facilities, and it was devised to be active at a Siemens Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System, SCADA system. Uh, the infiltration happened through some Windows installed computers with internet connections. And the SCADA systems are responsible for controlling the turn speed of the centrifuges that were used in uranium enrichment. The Stuxnet virus caused the centrifuges to spin out of control, resulting in explosions uh, with loss of property and potential human, potentially human life. Uh, their, their key takeaway from that incident was that lack of cybersecurity measures and critical infrastructure can lead to harmful attacks with serious consequence to property, human life, and industrial espionage. Their general thesis uh, is that intrusion detection systems are essential for CBS security in smart cities. Um, they make the point you know, that no matter how advanced the security in a network is, there's some chance that malicious actors will exploit vulnerabilities at some point. And IDS reveals unauthorized access to our systems from within or outside our network. And essentially it does three things. It spots, identifies, and reports intrusions. And they, they kind of make the claim that IDS, quote, can be called the, the main pillar of cyber defense. So then they spend the most, the rest of the paper really looking at 
IDS systems and, the, and a lot of time on how IDS can be classified. So there are three broad categories, um, systems that use source of audit data, systems that use different detection, or you can classify based on detection methodology, or based on honeypot systems used as IDS agents. So looking at the first of those, um, IDS classification based on the source of audit data, they break that into three categories. So there's host-based IDS, um, using, which essentially works on the hosting computer system, computer or system of collecting evidence and providing alerts in the case of a triggering event. Um, so the evidence, therefore, is generally related to that host. Um, it's like what processes or services we're running, things like that, the specific system and function calls. Second, there's a category of network-based IDS that work on a partition of the network, um, usually on a router or switch. They monitor and analyze the content of the packets flowing through the network and the upper layers of the uh, Open Systems Interconnect protocol, um, protocol stack, rather, to detect suspicious and unusual activity. Finally, a hybrid IDS system merges both of those into a unified and centralized manner, um, and th they're actually going to claim later that that's the best system for a smart city CPS. So looking at the second of the two broad breakdowns, IDS classifications based on detection methodology, these can also be broken down into three, three different subcategories. So uh, this paper was written by oops. Uh, all these people whose name I'm not going to pronounce. Um, there's actually a link to the presentation. I'm going to pause this.